This is game week two of Montijo Madness. Wait, two? 32. That's more like it. We're late on. It's a tight, tight race, and we got a game to play. Let's jump on in. Okay, this is game week 32. We are down to the wire. It is my team against Casareño at home. Uh, we are, I don't think we have any change. Oh, yeah, we do have changes. So it's Madrigal, Cardozo, Anibo, Martinez in the back. It's Bernabe. Rodal will be in the middle. Condul, Yeti, Aqua, Pozo, Catala. Um, you know what? I'm thinking about it right now. Let's put Baragon in. I'm going to switch it. It's going to be Baragon. Never mind. He's on the left. Um, the bench is going to be Tienza, Javicino, Machado, Aqua, Ibrakeza, Cristo, Rio. Big, big news with David Batanetto. Huge injury. It's a hip injury. He's going to be out for two to four months, effectively the rest of the season. So that happened in training due to wear and tear. Put that, uh, I kid you not, look at this. Um, entry history. Wear and tear. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's move on. Let's go. It's Casadeño at home. We got to we got to get some points out of this. Always press him absolutely. El County. Oh my god, these guys are like really really dangerous. Um Who else? Who else? Who else? I think this is going to be it. How much? How many goals does El County have? Seven. That's a lot, dude. Their wingers got a lot going on. I'm playing a uh, cautious fluid uh, counterattack here. This is going to be a big, big game, and Castellano do not drop points typically. I am a little scared. I, I feel like, I mean, last four games I've drawn against teams, so it's like I'm feeling a little vulnerable right now, and I feel like this could be a loss. Right. Let's just encourage the team here. I feel like we're there's nothing going on, but we're we're doing better at the moment. So I don't want you know just looking at the the match stats here. But we're 27 minutes in. Things can change. Got to see Manchon. It's over. It's over. We'll take it if it's over. Madrigal. Cardozo. I can't believe we're in this title uh, fight right now. I literally, I, I know I keep saying it too, but I really, looking at my team, I know, I thought I was going to be like mid-table for sure. Oh my God. Right through. It's Catala. Dinked it in. It's in. 1-0. Ruben Catala. Assist from Pozo are, <laughs> I think, our two favorite players. That's great. That's great. What a ball through. Who is this? Klausi dinked it over. Moreno feeling like a moron. Demand more. Oh, they didn't like that as much. Okay. That's not what I was hoping for, if I'm honest. Throws it in. Rodau. It's headed away. Pozo. Don't hold on to it. Yeah, out to Catala. Oh, unable to hold on to it. I get it. He's squeezed between two players. Gomis. Catala chasing him back. It's a left back. 
Klausi. I see three men. Teus. Oh, ball over the top. Madrigal heads it out, but it's still De Garci. He's able to keep it in. Blocked cross. Fernandez gets a blocked shot. If I can get a clean sheet off Casadeño, I'll be over the moon. Over the moon. Little County. Gomez. Oh, man. Pozo, great tackle. Oh, he loses the ball to Mickey. Mike, I don't know. Let's see. Teus. Mike. Don't lose it. All right, thank you. Booted it away. Catala went it down. Hit it down. Ah, that was Kunduel. You gotta be you gotta be charging at that ball. Going to halftime one nil, please. I do not want them to get an opportunity here. Going one nil, please. No. El County's on it. Hits it. Oh, it's just over the top. All right, all right. So we had the better half for sure. Uh, yeah, just keep it up. I'm enjoying what you're, I'm seeing right now. Baragan, I want his, uh, like, I, he's training week in, week out at, like, nines, 8.5s. So I just want him to get a little bit of run. Maybe he could do something. He's got two goals, two assists as well. It's not like, it's not like Iber Keita or Cristo is, like, eating his lunch, you know. That's Pozo. Pozo is basically locked in. He's going to be a guy who's going to play. Kudul is just the fact that he's playing well. His body guys offsides, but uh, but you know, Pozo is the only guy who's going to be locked in. I mean, he's getting assists and goals. Katala has got 22 goals this season. It's like those guys are on offense; they're guaranteed getting in there. You know, I tried getting Ryo in there, tried it, couldn't couldn't meld him in, and uh, the other guy Kenizo, basically, like he's. I'm not really using him, if I'm honest. Oh, the parent club is like, oh, I'm pissed about that. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to loan you guys anymore. I'm like, who cares? Who cares? Can you, your, your boy, can you, basically stinks. So, all right. So, recovering from a knock and duel. I don't like that. Uh, Baragon definitely needs to come off. Let's uh, put, let's put Gideon Aqua in because, uh, again, it, He's been playing regularly, so it feels like he's probably the best the best option here. I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to let him recover, see how he does, and then if, uh, if we still have an issue, I'm going to put Pozo back there and then uh, demand more. Uh-oh, Garci! Oh, it's just over the bar. Okay, let's put uh, Keita in. Keita in. Pozo's gonna get knocked back there, and that's it. Honestly, let's just throw Manuel Rayo in. Let's just do it. Katala is so gassed right now. Encourage the team. They don't care for that. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Please just trickle into a one nothing. Just. Just one nil, boring, crappy little game. I don't care how I do it; it just needs to happen. Pozo, he's gonna shoot, hit it. Uh, he took the shot, but it was a little too, too big of a touch. We are real close to the edge of this game now. Thirty seconds left. They made big changes. Moreno, Klausi. Mickey, ball over the top. Cardozo, Madrigal, there we go. It's off sides as well. Madrigal will be out for the next game, I believe. I think he was uh, yellow card accumulation, so I think the next game he's out, which stinks. That really stinks. Yeah. 
There we go. Waste the time. Waste it. Boots it forward. Abriketa kind of half wins it. And that's fine. We'll take it. 1-0. And this is an absolute classic. Malia on the road against Los Villanos and getting a victory 4-3 late. Miguel Garcia opens it up eight minutes into the game. Sierro uh, gets a, an injury, unfortunately, 28 minutes. Victor, easy, easy finish with, uh, you know, from like two to three yards out, essentially. They go in into the break, 1-1, one, one, and then the game explodes. Ten minutes after halftime, Ohime hits this absolute bullet into the corner. Uh, yeah, that's when you think like, oh, wow, this is... Uh, a really, really like high-level game. Unfortunately, you get corrected in the next goal. Uh, there's a total flap from the goalkeeper, and Sergio Perez is able to scramble it in to level it up to 2-2. Mia Garcia gets, five minutes later, he gets a uh, penalty, puts that past uh, Lazaro. And then Javi Perez, about eight minutes later, puts his past. So now it's 3-3, and Malia have really nothing to play for and they score one in the 96th minute. As you can see, Sergio Perez gets a brace uh, with a nice dinked finish right at the end. Guadalajara are desperate for points. They're deep in that relegation battle, and they hosted Cordia. And Cordia were able to beat them 1-0 in a tight affair, and Nane on the score sheet 21 minutes in. Elsewhere in Segovia, uh, Segoviana hosted Estepona in a nil-nil draw and neither team really could afford that. Segoviana are obviously trying to stave off relegation for this season and Estepona are trying to get promoted, potentially get into the playoff push if possible. So the draw does nobody any favors and that is just how it ends. It's a boring nil-nil draw. Neither team really wants to make the effort or the mistake. Dio Cassano came to Union Adarve in hope that maybe, because they have nothing to play for, that they could beat them and get much needed points on the table. But Segovia, the star striker and 37-year-old veteran, had other ideas. He dispatched in a great little header from Minyambres, uh, and then the second one, he jumped over the goalkeeper, headed that one home 30 minutes in, and then decided to go for the hat trick in the first half and do it in style, hat trick of headers, jumps over two defenders to put it away, and basically the game was over at halftime. Uh, a little consolation goal two minutes into the second half, but Diego Sano was not able to really produce anything else beyond this. Atletico Paso do not show up to this game. They absolutely get beat on stats and then lose to a penalty. Don Benito basically missed every single shot that they took. They had 27 shots, 13 on target, 4.37 XG, which is really, really high. So they missed a penalty, and uh, two minutes later, they conceded a goal to Foda, who eventually got a brace, a late, late goal to win it for Alcocon B. Compaure was able to bundle home a goal that was essentially unmissable, but Don Benito completely shot themselves in the foot with this Stupid play that Foto was able to score from. Just crazy. Cerniola hosted Naval Carnero and the absolutely high flying Bulgarian relegates Cerniola officially with this goal. Dorian Jr. carries Leganes B team through with one goal. It's three points. They do not care how they win and. It is vitally important for that relegation battle. All right, here we are. This is the table. Uh, Atletico Paso dropped because they, uh, well, they dropped points. Uh, they lost to a penalty from Atletico uh, Madrid, and now they're at 56. I won one nothing, so we're now level on points. However, uh, the deciding factor is, uh, was it a uh, results against teams? So considering that, hold on here, Atletico Paso past meetings, they have beaten me. So they are, uh, they have the advantage when it is level. So that being said, uh, yeah, I'm 
that's you know that's basically essentially functioning as a half point. Uh, I have to beat them outright and able to get the title here. Um, but I will say is that Atletico Madrid now is uh, is now in play. They're in play to actually win the title here after beating Atletico Paso, and they're now three points away with two games left. They have to take me on next game, so this is entirely possible that they could come through. They do have to beat Don Benito uh, at home in the last game of the season, so that's also difficult. But Atletico Paso, look at this: Sequeiros at home and then Cordia away. They got a couple couple nasty games themselves. So, anyways. Uh, Atletico Madrid B, I thought they were probably out of the title race, but they might be back in because they beat Atletico Paso and now they're three points in. So it's it's very interesting. Uh, the other playoff spots here, Estepona and Don Benito, 51 points apiece. Casareño at 50, just outside. Cordia, 49. Uh, so they're still chasing the, the playoff spots, now two points away because uh, they got their win over Guadalajara. Uh, Vienno Vens, 47, Adarve, 47. They're done, done. I mean, they only got six points left to play for, and it's four points out. So something's got to give. It's unlikely. Nava Carnero and Malia, 43 points. They're well and truly safe. Mathematically now, uh, you know, they're nine points up from, from there. So they're totally fine. Sequeiros as well is officially safe. Uh, they got 41 points. Uh, so there's seven points in face from safety, and there's only six left to play for. Now, going into the relegation spot, Segovia at 35 points, Diocasano, Leganes, Luka, 34 points, 33 points, and then Guadalajara are now in 16th with 32 points. So, you know, three points separates four places, and there's only one spot for safety. You don't know who will be. Certain you are officially relegated and are going to be dropping out of this division for not being good enough. Uh, we kind of knew that was going to happen a while ago. If you go back to the past positions here, essentially you kind of knew it when they had this long, long run uh, from game week 10 to game week 21. They had a brief resurgence, but they were still unable to get out of the relegation zone. So, uh, yeah, you know, you kind of knew that it was going to happen early in the season, particularly as you know this middle stretch kept going on that they were they were basically done. Alcorcon was the same thing. They kind of they kind of hit rock bottom. They had a brief resurgence. They poked their head out, but they eventually, you know, by game week 23 it was essentially the dust was settled. But these guys here you can see that you know now they're in this big big clump right at the end starting around game week 27. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking real, real tight now and it's getting f so close. It's so close. It's so, so close. Um, yeah, I mean, look at this title race. Atletico Madrid B has only been first place from game week two, three, and four. And I mean, it's basically the, the, you know, Montijo and myself, or myself, I am Montijo and Atletico Paso, uh, we basically like the last third of the season, maybe 40% of the season, it's basically between the two of us. Uh, there's only one team that's actually poked through who I want to say, Don Benito? Nope. Estepona? Nope. Gossip? Nope. Was it them? Yeah. Correa. They had a brief poke through, you know, right in the middle here, and then they were essentially never seen again. So uh, that is... Uh, Game week 32 right now. Big loss at Lidico Paso. I can't believe it. They, it's a it's a, a penalty. Uh, I won in a squeaky little 1-0 victory. Cerdan Yola are officially relegated to Dunn. Um, but, of course, playoffs. Playoff picture is completely amorphous. You don't know. Oh, I do have one thing for you. Uh, development center. We signed a couple of players. Youth intake. We signed a few of them. Uh, some of these guys kind of stink, and I don't care about them whatsoever. Some of them are decent. Uh, Mario Mata, he is from Montijo, I believe. Nope, Badajoz, it's a same region. Uh, you know, uh, decent. I mean, decent. He's not great, if I'm honest, but uh, we'll take him. And let's see the other guy. Oh, uh, I'm going to sign this guy, Chris Kivori. Uh, he's a goalkeeper, sweeper keeper. 
Uh, he's Congolese in Spanish. Ivan, I'm actually, this guy is probably the best one of the bunch, if I'm honest. Ivan, uh, he's 15 years old. He's from Cáceres, which is also from the region. And uh, he, he looks like a decent little player, honestly. He's got a fairly ambitious personality, good physicals as well. His mentals could use some work, but he's got, you know, this the little trinity here, it's decent. His finishing needs a little bit of work, but uh, Yvonne looks like, I mean, he's 15, so it's he's got a lot of room to work with. Eduardo Serrano, uh, I'm not super hot on him. He was the best person to come out of the youth intake, but I don't really care about him if I'm honest. Uh, I just signed him to see what, you know, see if there's a potential for him to get better. He's 16 years old, but whatever. Jose Pazos, uh, this guy, I'm actually, I think he might turn out to be decent. If I'm honest, he's 15 years old. He is from Montijo. And uh, he's got decent physicals. You know, he doesn't, he's not the paciest person, but uh, he could do a, he could do a decent job. Diego Morales, our Uruguayan Spaniard. Uh, yeah, he's also like a decent, he could turn into a, uh, a center back potentially, but his strength definitely needs to be a little bit better, actually. So he might just be a right back. But um, yeah. I mean, decent little player. He's not wowing me, but, you know, he is what it is. And then Juan Alfonso Martí, uh, he's probably one of the better guys to come out of here as well. Balanced personality, uh, 15 years old as well, so uh, he's also from Montijo. So, uh, yeah, I think Juan Alfonso Martí and then Ivan are probably the two best players to come out of here. Everybody else is kind of garbage, if I'm honest, uh, and I'm not really that hot on him Alejandro Bravo who cares about you oh this is funny Ivan Pastor um you see this guy 15 years old he's absolutely garbage I'm not signing him whatsoever but just randomly he's just Senegalese <laughs> just like out of nowhere I'm like okay sure uh but yeah that's it let's go on to the uh the next round of games here this is uh this is big oops here we go um, Al B at home to Segoviano. You have to think Segoviano wins this. They have to. These are this is guaranteed three points for them. If they don't win this, I think they might go down. It you know there's only one spot to be safe, and Segoviano have to win this, and they have to force everybody else to win. They are the first game of the week, and they could really put the pressure on immediately. You know, and if anybody else does not win their games, they're going to be relegated immediately. So. Uh, Segovia has a real chance here to stay up. Going forward, if they're relegated. It's a dead rubber team. Darve has nothing to play for, and Cerniola are... Um, I mean, Darve is technically still available to get the playoffs, technically, but it's unlikely. Uh, Dominito at home to Cordia. Two teams are going for the playoffs. If Cordia win this, that's huge implications that they could potentially slip into or sneak into the uh, into these uh, playoff spots. Um potentially, depending on the other results. So Cordia might need to win back-to-back. -back. Uh, Guadalajara at home to Leganes. This is another one. Guadalajara have to win this. Leganes have to win this. This is a massive, massive game for both teams because, look, if Segovia, won, if Segovia wins, that means that this becomes an automatic, like, if the teams draw, both of them are done. They're done if they draw. So the win is absolutely necessary for both Guadalajara and Leganes B. This this is basically one team goes down. That's how this game, either one team goes down or they both go down. That's kind of how this is, depending on that Segoviano result. Casareño at home to Estepona. Another one, this is a playoff picture push. That's what these two teams are. Dio Casano, Malia. Dio Casano need it. They need to win. Malia's safe. Dio Casano absolutely need this because, Sego again, Segoviano sets the pace here. They are in the safe zone. If they beat Alcorcón B, who is the worst team in the league, then all of a sudden you have desperation. Dio Casano have to beat a big, big team at home, and if they don't, they're done. And again, like an SB, Guadalajara, that's a do-or-die game right here. This is a huge do-or-die game. My team against Atletico Madrid B, this is title stuff. If you can't win these games, you don't deserve to win the title. This is, I mean, talk about the two huge marquee games right now, Montijo and Atletico Madrid B for like both teams are out of desperation, right? Navacarnero and Villanovens, 
dead rubber game. Uh, Vienna Vince technically have a chance to get into the playoff spots, but it's outside. Atletico Paso at home to Suquemos. This is, again, Atletico Paso are just first, so they need to win it. So we got we got some great, great, great games here. This one sets the pace for the relegation battle. Absolutely dynamo game here. And then you also have, uh, you got a playoff potential game, Don Benito and Correa. You got another one with Casadeño and Estepona. You got a title game, which is Montillo, Atletico Madrid B, and then Atletico Paso and Sequemos. And then finally, you got two more games that are all relegation based. One of them is literally a do or die game, Guadalajara and Liga SB, and then Dio Casano at Malia, or hosting Malia. Every single game, virtually every single game here, is absolute crazy town. Cerniola and Darve, dead rubber, who really cares about that game? And then Nava Carnero and Vino Vence, who really cares about that game? But every other game has huge implications on what is happening. Playoff picture, title picture, relegation picture. So this is, we're right at the end. We're going into game week 33. There's only two games left to play in this, and then we can go right into the playoffs. We're base. We're essentially in. We're in playoffs now, right? We're at 56, so we haven't technically secured the playoffs yet, mathematically. But if we get a draw, we're in. So, uh, I hope you're enjoying it. This is. We're right down the wire now. This is the nice edge. This is. You know, you do it or you don't do it. 